Hi there, my name is Dr. Anthony Cliff and today I'm going to talk you through how to get your coded data from Excel into SPSS and how we tell SPSS what those codes mean and perform an error check before we go for our next session looking at our descriptive statistics. So open up SPSS as of November 2019, we're currently on version 26. Make sure you have the most up-to-date version. Go ahead and open that up. You should pop up with a box that looks similar to this. What you need to do is navigate to open another file. So click on that and that will open up your box here. The first thing you need to do is change the files of type, change that to Excel. And then go ahead and find where your questionnaire data is located. Once you've navigated to that particular location, click on it so it's highlighted. You should see it in this box here. And then click Open. SPSS will think about it for a second. And then this box should pop up. As we can see here, that's what our file looks like. Yep. Excellent, that's looking all good to me. Make sure that these are ticked. Your read variable names for your first row of data is ticked. Your percentage of values is ticked. And ignore hidden rows and columns is ticked. And then that's fine. Click OK. SPSS will tell you that it's getting the data. And here we go. It will pop up something that looks like this if you click Data View. Then similar to your Excel file, all your data is there, it is all coded. Here's all the questions along the top, just like it was in Excel. So if you go to Variable View, this is where we now tell SPSS what our codes meant. However, the first thing we have to do is change all of these to numeric. So a string value is something that has words in. Now often Excel will already change this to numeric for you. Um, if you pull this from online surveys you may well find that it is all numeric. But if I were you, just to make sure, make sure that everything is numeric. So you just go ahead, you click on the three dots next to it, click numeric and then click OK. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now for each individual one. Okay, and here is where we now, for example, we had question one. Well, our question one was gender. So we type what our question was in there. And this is where we now tell SPSS what our values are. So you click on the three dots next to values and this new box will pop up. So my particular one, if I go back to my code book and I scroll up for question one for this one. So one was female. So you type one in the value box and then you tell SPSS what that is. So one is a female, two was a male, three was other, and four was prefer not to say. Click add, then click OK. We need to tell SPSS that if you find any 99s that it's missing data, pop that in there. And it's nominal data, so here we tell SPSS what type of data it is. So often gender, age, uh, or yes or no questions are nominal. If anything has a value more than something else, for example, strongly agree is more than strongly disagree, then it would be ordinal data. And certainly your like it scale data will also be ordinal um, or scale, depending on what type of test you're running on. But ordinal or scale for now is absolutely fine, um, because we'll come around to tell you how to change these to run particular tests. So you would then go through for each individual question, add the label in here. So why we call this a label? So if I were to run a test, so if I were to show you, if I go to the descriptives, frequencies, and throw gender across and then click OK. SPSS is going to tell me straight away 
So I have gender in this box rather than Q1. That's why we give that a label. And I can see where we've got 114 females, 42 males, and one person who prefer not to say. So instantly I'm getting that data, and that's called a data descriptive. I'll go through that more in our next session when we do our descriptives. So you want to go ahead and make sure that you've changed all of these, and I'll show you what that will look like. Okay, eventually you'll end up something in variable view that looks a little bit like this. You have your questions down the side, you have your type as numeric, don't need to worry about the width or decimals. You have what your question is, so question 1 was gender, question 2 was age, question 3 was location, question 4 education, etc. And then for each individual one of the values, you've listed all the values there, you've made sure that all your 99s are in there, and finally you've told SPSS what type of data it is. So now that you've done that, you're all set up in SPSS and you're ready to go. And the first thing you need to do is to do an error check. So to do that, you go to transform and then uh, correction, analyze, descriptives, and then frequencies. And then holding your control button down, click on every single variable all the way down and you'll want to pop it across into this box here. So go ahead and do that. Okay, so I have all my variables in this variable box. Don't need to worry about that because that was the unique identifier for each individual person. Once they're all in there, simply click OK. And SPSS will run all your data. Now, we're not too concerned at this particular point what our data is telling us. We're not too concerned about our frequencies and percentages and where people lie. We're simply interested in finding errors. So how to spot a potential coding error then? Well here we had gender, so we have our different categories here. So female, male, prefer not to say. Now you may find you may have a number here. So you've not told SPSS what that number means. So if I had a 5 in here when it should have been a 4 for example, it'll pop up here. Because I've told SPSS to only look out for three different numbers. So it'll pop up there. If that's the case, if you had a missing number here, you would then navigate to that question. So if I went to, so I know it's gender, I know that's question one. You go back in here, back to data view, find question one, and then you would scroll down here, find that particular wrong number, and then add five. Quite often you may find you may have a nine in there, and that's because you've gone to try and do 99, and you've just been too quick, and you've not put the other nine in to make 99, that's fine, you just go ahead, find that, and then add 99 in that particular one, then tick that off your list. You may also find that you have something that says missing 99, that's fine, because that's SPSS picking up on that missing data. However, if you have missing system, that means that you have a blank file, or a blank cell in that particular column. Um, I don't think I have any in my, in my data, so you just scroll through, making sure that everything looks right, everything's coded. Yep, that's all fine. That was a Likert scale question. It's picked up there that I have missing data for one of them. Excellent. But I have no missing systems. Now, if you have a missing system, which means you have a blank cell that you've not coded as 99, simply navigate to that and then add 99 to that particular one. Now, sometimes... Um, in some particular people's files when they've added an extra file into um, their Excel they'll find that if they scroll down to the bottom they may have little dots with some blank cells on the side here, little dots if that's the case that's going to come up as missing data and all you would simply do is if you have a whole row along here that has little dots in it Click the number next to it and simply click delete on your keyboard and that will delete that and that will get rid of that missing system data in there. So that's how you perform an error check. You do that to make sure that your, your data is correct, that you've coded everything correctly. It's unlikely you're going to find it's perfect so you obviously will find some mistakes in there. Say often it's the 99 um, as you're going through doing it by hand. You're trying to double click your 99 and move on. It just comes up as a 9. It's fine. 
navigate to that. It can be a little hard sometimes, especially when you've got all different numbers. For example, here, this was a, um, a question about, um, I think it was where they lived, so they had different options. So you're trying to find a 9 in there, when it should be a 99, it can be a challenge. Um, but just take your time to find it. Because you want to be efficient at this, but you also want to make sure that you're not making any mistakes. So, now that we've got that, we're going to, in the next session, look at how to do some data descriptives on our data. So, well done for getting this far, and we'll move on to our next session.